Hey everybody, welcome to Naturalistics, a podcast dedicated to helping you become a better naturalist. We do this through asking great questions, making good observations, and telling stories, the three components which make up the Naturalistics Triforce. My name is Stefan, and here with me is Matt. What's up? And today we're going to be talking about field guides. How to judge whether a field guide is good or bad. Dun, dun, dun. Get ready for a nerdy subject. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so how's it going, Matt? Pretty good. Yeah, it's full-on summer here in Maine. Fourth of July, actually. Fourth of July. And uh, we're here recording a podcast. Black flies are done. Mosquitoes are abating. Not so not so bad here in southern Maine. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, lots, lots of stuff going on. Beautiful I mean, I'm working, days. we're both working a lot, so it's, it's, uh, it's challenging to be in full-on naturalist mode sometimes, but there's so much to check out, and there's so much happening, bird life, insect life. All kinds of stuff. A busy naturalist is a good naturalist. Supposedly. <laughs> Who said that? Yoda? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's me pretending to be Yoda, talking to you, pretending that you are a Jedi Padawan. Like Luke Skywalker or something like that? Or no, am not, I Anakin? Not on that level. <laughs> not even Anakin. No, I'm not even Anakin. You're like the Padawan who almost didn't make it. All right, we're getting a little off topic here. <laughs> So you can find us. We want to let you know where you can find us. You can find us on SoundCloud right now. You can find us. You can email us. Our email is naturalisticspod at gmail dot com, or you can find us on Twitter, naturalistics underscore. Shoot us a tweet or an email. Ask us a question like this one. We're about to go into our question of the week or month, as it were. Here we go. So this one's from Brendan, and Brendan asks. Why do some plants bloom later slash earlier than others in the year? This is a great question, and it, it it's kind of ties back into um, when we were talking about phenology uh, last month. And the, fir- the first thing I'm, th- I'm thinking here, Matt, is uh, like approaching this as a naturalist by the, by the naturalistic's definition and with the Triforce in mind. Um, this question already is like spawning other questions for me. Right. It's a pretty – it's broad and – it's great in that way. Yeah. So one one of the questions that, that I'm thinking is like, first of all, what is the function of a flower? And Whoa. this might be something that maybe you already know, right? But it's it's something that I am thinking about. If I have a question of like, why is something a certain way? I kind nice. of step back and say, what is its purpose? You know, nice. for, for yeah. that organism, what what purpose does that serve? Yeah, for sure. What purpose does a flower serve, Stefan? Sexual reproduction. That's one purpose, supposedly. All right. Lay it on <laughs> Can you me. prove it? Lay it on no, me. I, no, I think that's good. Um, that's a good place to start. You know, and then you got to ask, so what's the purpose of a flower, and how does it do the thing it's supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Is the other... It's like... Yeah. So maybe you think, all right, well, pollinators help help flowers do what they do, right? So yep. who, who pollinates that flower? I'm thinking, like, cardinal flower, which is a really cool nice, yeah. uh, sort of mid to late summer bloom Lubelia that we have cardinalis. here. And I remember reading this really cool thing that cardinal flower is, like, I think it's, like, something like 80% of the pollination of cardinal flower is done with the aid of a ruby-throated hummingbird, which is hmm. which is a cool bird that we have here I didn't know that. Um, in Maine in the summer. So it's just a neat thing. Like, some some of these flowers are more general with who who they're attracting as pollinators, and others might be really specific. They might be yeah. might be honed in to to really attract one specific pollinator that you know does most of the work for them. Yeah, and the, uh, you know another major pollinator um, for us is wind. Um, no, not not known as well, but definitely wind is a huge thing. For instance, all the trees here, almost all of them, tend to tend to flower in the early spring when the leaves aren't out yet. That way, the wind is blowing through the forest and stuff like that, and mm. spreading their pollen around. Cool. So, I mean, that's part of, and this goes back to uh, episode six, which we talked about phenology and the timing of things, right? And so, this is totally a, a phenological kind of question. So, yeah, trees, you know, wind po- mostly wind pollinated here in Maine, in the Northeast, um, North America, and so they're yeah they're going to be in spring. Other ones are going to be dependent on their pollinators. Mm-hmm. Um, Spring ephemerals, which we have in the northern hardwood forest here, yeah. have their their window of time where the sunlight is filtering down exactly into while the, the trees are floor. bloom or have their flowers out and yeah. are getting wind pollinated. Yeah, it's all, that's all connected. That part. Yeah. So it's a it's a really cool question, really broad, 
And uh, what are some other ways that Brendan might be able to like explore that question more? So he can listen to our phonology episode and maybe learn some tricks and patterns to like how you would study it so over start time. keeping track yeah yeah because um, it's a phonology question right absolutely yeah it's 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 how why are something why do some things bloom at such a time in relation to other things when they all when yeah. they're all he's talking about a group of things that flower yeah they all have flowers how why why are some blooming at this time and others at this time right and so i i, I think one thing that i'm curious about is like maybe if like you like you're saying Matt maybe for like a group of plants generally all flower around the same time but there's an outlier maybe pay attention to that outlier and see see what the deal is why why maybe that is an outlier might nice. become apparent yeah. so like I, witch I, hazel comes to mind exactly yeah you were thinking about that I was too. thinking witch hazel yeah why and I don't it, know why, why it, bloom it, in the fall? it blooms really late in the fall it's probably the last blooming plant around here so and I don't know why it fruits then or Neither flowers then so, yeah, I like that. Go for the outliers and then maybe work your way in and refine your question too. Like why do – maybe it's certain colors are blooming at certain time. Maybe it's certain size of the plant. Like start to break down relationships of, uh, of these plants. That's pretty cool though. We'll have to keep tabs on that one. Hopefully that's helpful for, a helpful answer for you, Brennan. Yeah, let us know. Let us know if you figure it out. Cool. So should we dive right in here? Yeah, so – Topic of the day, episode seven, we're going to lay out for you our field guide rating system, how we judge the quality of the field guides that we use or maybe don't use. And uh, first, right off the bat, Matt and I both have a tremendous amount of respect for the brilliant naturalists, the people involved with creating these field guides. They're an awesome resource. And it's, I mean, Matt, it's like the it's like the distilled knowledge of hundreds, you know, if not more, of yeah. of awesome naturalists, people who who had, you know, ha asking great questions, making great observations, and this is the the story that they're telling. Right? Yeah, I mean, just thinking about it for a minute, like, what was the field guide of the past? Like, the field guide of the past was like your grandfather, your grandmother, or like the your the uncle or neighbor down the road. Or, you know, maybe even further back, like, some expert in the tribe or, like, you know, of the village or something like that. There's people who knew all the plants or knew all the birds. Um, and that was, like, your field guide. I mean, you know, if you didn't write, read, or there wasn't something like this available, then that's what you had. You know, later on, there were, like, experts, and those were the only people that knew, you know, you know once, you know, the scientific revolution came about, there were certain people that knew a t that were naturalists and knew a lot about specific groups of animals, but field guides is a new thing and it allows because of like publication and all that, it like allows for everyone to have access to this knowledge. And so that it just makes them incredible. It makes it like the, like, like an elder or like a, someone with that amount of wisdom. It's just like right on your bookshelf. Yeah. Um, or in your bag. Yeah. And many of them too. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> You have access to so many of them. And, the, and you know, it's worth it to talk about for just a second. Like, field guides are better than the Internet, okay? Like, they just are. They're more specific. They're, you're going to get less bogged down in some random stuff. May, maybe maybe in a couple decades the Internet will ha be more concise in certain ways where you can just – where there's better resources on, online. But right now, field guides are, are better resources for naturalists. I think of the Internet – and what's on there is supplemental to to what you're going to have in text. You end up spending a lot of time sifting through the dross of all the garbage that's out there. Like it's just there's so much information on the on the internet that the information you actually want is like, you know, a needle in a haystack. Exactly. Even with the great search engines and everything, it's just yeah. I'm I'm totally with you on this map. Field guides are invaluable. Yeah. For a naturalist. And I think there's something to be said about tangible physical in your hands feel to something i mean there's research on that being part of like those that aspect of learning something being important to your brain and retaining information and things like that so i think there's an element of like flipping through the pages and knowing what page certain things are on and having that familiarity with a physical tangible thing that's going to help you retain 
So it's almost like you're forming a relationship with this field guide that's going to help you form a relationship with all these uh, creatures and plants and places. Yeah. Um, so we'll dive in here. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to go. And I, I was thinking the um, you mentioned like field guides now. There's a lot of field guides. And it, it makes me think there's a lot, even for one category of, you know, naturalist inquiry, there are a number of options. Um, if you are interested in plants and you go to a bookstore looking for a field guide on plants, you have a lot of options. And so yeah. Matt and I felt like this would be a good episode um, to talk about how, how can you judge, you know, what is a good plant guide when there are so many options out there today? Um, how, how do you know that you're getting the right one, especially if you're just, if you're just breaking into an area of, of, uh, of study, yeah. um, of naturalist inquiry? Um, it can be daunting to try and yeah. pick, pick the right book. And it can also stonewall you too. Like say, I don't, I've seen people, I've seen this happen where people get stonewalled because they get the wrong guy. Like they get, they just get a guide that's not very helpful for what they're curious about. They have all this enthusiasm, and curiosity, right? Yeah. And they just can't get to what they need as far as like research because the guide is just, it's really hard to navigate or like the pictures or drawings are really off. They can't find what they need. And, you know, we're just trying to help smooth that process out and just really point people in the right direction as far as a good guide. Like specifically, we're going to rate a few guides on our rating scale. We're hoping that will help you know how good some of these guides are. We picked out some of our favorites. But also hoping you can apply the rating system that we're going to use to wherever you are in the world, whatever guides are in front of you, and say, okay, which one of these is going to be the best for me in this situation where I'm at? Cool. And so, with, that, with that said, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the criteria that we have figured out and this is a system, many hours this is a system that made, humming and hawing over the years. <laughs> that is, i don't think anyone's ever spent that much time on this maybe we're I, excited about this i though. don't know it's, i'm excited it's in it. its infancy and and uh you know it's these are things that matt and i have have maybe known and articulated in the past but th this was like definitely an effort um that we kind of c congealed all, yeah. all these different factors and we broke it down into four main categories. Right. So our rating system has four categories, which we're hoping is like more granular than like the Am like then if you go into Amazon, they do have ratings for these books, but it's all that you know the five st out of five stars, which I don't feel like is actually very helpful for a field guide. Maybe for a lot of books, it's helpful, but you know, for s people come to find a field guide for a couple different reasons. And you'll see, and you'll see what I'm talking about more as we get into the rating system. But we're hoping that this is more of like a granular, specific um, rating system. That's but not too specific. Kind of trying to be general here. Yeah, these these categories should apply to any field guide, um, and they should be helpful for you to to quickly, without spending too much time, um, judge whether that field guide is going to be appropriate for for the for the kind of uh, naturalist interest that you have. Nice. So we reveal our criteria. Dun, 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 dun. Number one, distribution and range maps. So this category has to do with um, making it easy for the user to find out wh where they can expect to find something that they read about in the field guide. Or often it's you found something, you know where you are, and you want to narrow things, narrow your search down, um, and so you can rule out the things that don't, yeah, exactly. that you don't, are not found where you are. I mean, I think some people might be surprised that this is part of our criteria, but I, th but we both agree that it's that important. It's so important. I mean, when you think about nature and the and the world, the earth, how, <laughs> and even your geographic region wherever you live, how different ecology is when you go from place to place, and how dish, like how. Species are distributed not like evenly across the world. Maybe someday there will be just one field of corn or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you find it wherever you go. Uh, but right now, <laughs> uh, it's really important as a naturalist to know where you can find things or if you found something, where the things you might have found or like where 
you can look for the thing you found mm-hmm. in what guide. Yeah, so it's it's uh, it's pretty basic, but it's really helpful. And some field guides don't do very don't That's do true. a very good job of this. And and the, and the quality of a field guide really goes down if it can't give you this information. Because it's all about usability. For us, yep. we're reading this in, with naturalists. It's in a line. field guide. If, underline field gu- field field heck field. Yes. Field. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's number two? Number two is navigability. So ease of use. Yeah, um, this one's really important. Basically, it, when, when you when you pull that field guide out of your backpack um, in the field, how easy is it for you to get from total mystery to family to yeah. genus to species like how how quickly can you hone in on what it is you actually have in hand yeah everybody's done the let me just flip through the pictures one by one you don't want to have to do that that's kind of like the bottom of the barrel for us like we really don't want our guides to be doing that for us that we want them to quickly and easily bring us to smaller and smaller groupings so that we can refine our search better and better um, and so navigability is really easy, really great. And, um, we want our guides to have keys. We want our guides to be really clearly dist- like there's clear, easy ways to find where you want to go basically. Yeah. So keys are awesome. Um, oftentimes field guides will have a description of terms in the front of the guide. That's definitely part of it. Or, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be able to know what the text is talking about. Um, to yeah. be able to recognize characteristics that help you to distinguish between uh, different different families, different species, it is is really helpful. Um, so yeah, keys, description of terms is great, um, and then layout is usually usually they mm-hmm. s- there's some sort of logic behind the way a field guide is laid out, yeah. and that can play into ease ease of use even even in the absence of a full dichotomous key. Um, yeah. If a field guide is laid out in a in a way that um, yeah. is sort of streamlined, uh, it can it can still be relatively quick to get yeah. to where you want to be. Yep. Number three is species accounts, um, and so these and or accounts in general because we're not always going to be talking about organisms. Maybe geology sometimes or something. Sure, like that's that. a good point. But um, so what counts are like the what, what a lot of people think about with field guides is like the drawings, the illustrations, the pictures the descriptions and um, information about particular animals, mm-hmm. plants, the rocks. <laughs> yeah, anything like that. Um, and like, or a plate. You know, like a lot of times in field guides, there would be like a plate which with, uh, with a specific bird group or something like that on it. Um, and this is a whole category because, first of all, a really good guide has elegant species accounts that really – articulate to you the reader the naturalist what this creature this thing organism looks like and behaves like and where and all those things about it the thing that you want to find (laughs) or the thing that you have found and another aspect of this is comprehensiveness and this is when step stefan's really into this i'm a stickler for comprehensiveness but i think it's really important too and this is about can i can I find all the species of this group, for instance, let's just say birds, are all the birds represented in this guide? Are, is, does every bird have a species account? And if it does, that's going to get a good grade from us. If it doesn't, that's not very good because what happens if I'm looking at the bird that's not in the guide? Then that's not very useful. That's a brick. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what you call a brick. There's the stone wall and then there's the brick. <laughs> So anyway, yeah. that's a big element of it. Yeah, I've had personally, I've had yeah a lot of experiences, um, in particular with mushroom field guides, which I feel like mushrooms are a category that he's gonna it go on a t- has <laughs> mu- mush- <laughs> mushrooms. It's a cool, it's a cool category um, because there's so much that's unknown and uh, and undescribed. Um, but at the same time, the field guides can be lacking when you when you are in that position where it's like. Oh, cool! What is this mushroom? And you get in, and you and you you try you get maybe you get close, but you can't quite figure out exactly what that mushroom is. Right. It it's it stinks to get stumped like that. So, um, comprehensiveness makes field guides awesome. Yep, definitely. So it's that's incorporated into the accounts grade. Mm-hmm. How um, comprehensive are the accounts, basically? Last category is packability, um, and this is going to be about 
So when I put it in my knapsack and I go hiking for a couple of days, a week, an afternoon, a morning, is it going to be holding me back? Is it like 10 pounds? Is, is it, it a brick? Is it another brick? <laughs> a physical brick? Or is it really nice and sleek and fits really well and lasts a long time, can take a beating? Can, like This is actually, I think, we both think, an important factor of do I want to take this field underlined field guide? It's in the name. <laughs> <laughs> without in the, uh, with me in the field, so um, that's gonna be important. And then the last thing about the, our rating system is that we're gonna group, or we're gonna give each bur each book, um, a beginner, intermediate, intermediate, or expert level rating, and that's just gonna help you know what the guide's for, kind of. So, for instance, like. If a guide is really aimed towards helping someone who's a beginner, we don't want to rate them on the same scale as things that are just like designed for somebody who already knows a lot about this group and can just dive right in. Mm -hmm. You know, navigability, for instance, for a beginner is going to be a lot harder if you've just never been exposed to this whatever group of organisms it is um, versus an expert who should already have an assumed level of understanding. And so it's we just thought it was important enough that that's another aspect of the rating. So they're going to get four grades for each of those groups that we just talked about. They're going to get a beginner, intermediate, or expert grade, and then an overall grade. So it's going to for for the for listeners for people who are going to read this stuff from us. Um, really, it's going to come down to an overall grade and, a, and an intermediate, beginner, expert grade. Yeah, and and I think. Um Maybe maybe I'll help to make it clear. For like a beginner type field guide, we're, we we might include in this category those sort of like little like fold out pamphlet yes, type yeah. um, type guides, which are really great, really portable, yeah. and they're awesome. But they're it's a beginner level guide. Yeah, um, they're, they're, they're they can be so useful, account. but they're gonna they're not they're not gonna be comprehensive. You know, yeah. this and the species accounts are gonna be minimal. Yeah. Um, but but they're but they're good begin they're good guides for beginners to use. Yeah. So um, for instance, that kind of a guide might get a low grade in the species account section, but a good overall grade because it's like it does what it does. It does. It's and like it does it well. Exactly. Like it's kind of doing. We want to rate it on what it's trying to do, mm -hmm. and not like, but also be honest about the quality of the guide. Yeah. So that's why we have the four grades that are like granular grades, and then an overall grade. Um, with the level associated, so let's just dive right. Let's in here, do it. Huh? We're gonna start rating some guides, and it and it'll become more clear how how this works. Here we go. So, one of my favorite guides of all time. I'm so excited for this, by the way. I think Matt's copy has drool stains on it. For me, ogling at it. <laughs> um, but also, we're gonna be harsh because it's not perfect. So, Newcomb's Wildflower Guide by Lawrence Newcomb. It's a classic of. North American botanical study. Um, it's the wildflower guide. I yeah, would say. I mean it is. It's east. They made a West Coast guide. I'm pretty sure this is East Coast. Um, it's always been for the East Coast, um, or the original was. Um, and uh, yeah, I love this guide. I've used it for years and years and years. Mine's super beat up, but it's still going strong. Um, you know, even when I was doing botanical like scientific research. We always brought a Newcombs guide with us. Like, even though we had tons of like really crazy giant keys, we had so many resources. But Newcombs always was there for you. Like, seriously, it's so useful. Like, even like the most experienced botanist you can imagine will use Newcombs, which is pretty awesome. Newcombs is a better friend to Matt than I am. <laughs> I got one more thing I had actually had to say is that um, for the field guides in general, I think we're. I want to just stress one more, one thing, which is that our grades, while our, they're going to be really good and accurate to some degree, I think you want to like listen to a, our oh, to get a true sense of our grade grade for each each field guide. You want to listen to what we're saying, and like to hear us out on why we graded it mm -hmm. that way. And or and I think Stefan's going to do some writing on this in a bit, and we're going to post that on our website. So just make sure you read what we write about it in addition to just looking at the straight up grade. Because that might throw you off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the point isn't isn't for you to just see. Oh, he, they think these are good books, or they think these are crummy books. It's it's for you to be able to take 
the the sort of criteria, the rubric, if you will, and apply it to field guides that you're evaluating for your own use. Cool. So Newcombs, Matt, Matt graded his, and I, I graded them as well. And then so we haven't really discussed them. We discussed uh, we'll kind of like some of the me- we discussed the metrics in depth. <laughs> yeah, but not quite not our grades yet. So anyway, I'm gonna go through it. Here we go. I've got distribution at a C. I gave it C minus. I've got navigability at an A plus. A. I've got species accounts B plus. B minus. And I've got packability at A. B plus. Okay, so first of all, distribution on this book. It's like pre- there's no range maps. There's just some descriptions of habitat, habitat very minimal. Um, so I considered that like the average, like the bare minimum to get like a average grade. Yeah. Like it's not a D. A D would be like there's a one word. Mm-hmm. Like swamps. Yeah. That would be a D. Yeah. Um, but it is it's accurate enough. I mean, I definitely have used the habitat pieces to identify plants before it to helps. rule things yeah. out. It's and not it, useless. And it does work. Um, so I have to give it a C. Navigability is an A plus for me because, I mean, this is one of the most elegant keys that I can think of. It's like I can't. I. It's hard for me to think of a more a key that I've used more that's been more elegant. Um, and it's just the, de- it's like the defining key for me of all the keys I've ever used. Mm-hmm. And not only that, it has a key to the key and that's <laughs> equally elegant. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it just, it's the highest bar for me of, of keys. Nice. You're convincing me. I'm going to, I'm going to upgrade to an A plus on this. You're going to go for an A plus. Yeah. I had it at A, but you, you make a good point. What about the accounts? What do you think? You gave it a B minus. Right? I gave it B minus and I think you had B plus there. I did. Yeah, so we're, we differ a little bit on this. Um, I think mainly the thing dragging it down for me, I, I really like the illustrations. Um, I think in a wildflower guide, I, pre- I appreciate illustrations. In general, in field guides, I appreciate illustrations over f- photographs. Um, and so I thought I think those are good. And some of them are in color. I don't know if that's not the most recent edition. Color can, I think it's still the same, though. Color can be helpful. Um and, but there's a lot of uh, sort of just like line drawings, which are all – they're nice in their simplicity. They're beautiful line drawings. I and, mean, these uh, are like – and they're really accurate. And they're really not taking up much space. Um, so it's just like for how much page – like the, the volume of, of drawing to the, to the amount that you get out of it is so much. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, number of species per plate is pretty good. Um, but not not overcrowded either. Um, yeah, you could you could definitely do better than this though for the accounts. Really, um, the thing that that pulls it down in this category for me is the is the comprehensiveness. It, right, it's that's a, right. It's a great guide, but it's not comprehensive. And Matt and I have run into this actually, not, you know, pretty recently on our trip in, in the White Mountains. We had a few species that um, we got. We kind of like using the yeah. key, we narrowed it down to like groups, but weren't able to get two species be- simply because the species wasn't in the book. There so. were alpine plants though, right? There, Yeah, there were some alpine plants. There was also that speed well that um, oh, that's right. we found in the parking lot that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't in there. Um, yeah, so that'll happen sometimes. Fuck it. Um, and when it does, it's, it's a bummer, but overall the guide is... is is pretty fabulous. Yep. So, and packability. I mean, this is just like your gene- to me it's like the generic field guide binding size, weight. It's just like it doesn't get much smaller than this. And it doesn't get <laughs> And sometimes they brap. Yeah, so it's like the generic field guide size, and I just gave it an A because, I, I don't know, it's like the standard of, of a good quality binding small guide. Yeah, yeah, it has the sort of like the traditional sort of like plastic coated paper um, yeah. binding. I feel like these days I, I'm looking more for like the, the kind of binding, for, for that, like you said, like, like the this... sta- I feel like the new standard is like the, uh, what's on like, uh, a Sibley's. Or, yeah, that's a good point. Um, that sort of like. What did you give it? Heart, I gave it a B plus. 
Yeah, um, and, I could go and there. that it, I fi- I find it to be per- you know perfectly reasonably packable, portable. Um, weight is not an issue, but the durability is uh, like like you said, yours definitely is still u- perfectly usable, but is showing signs of wear. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's it's mainly it's mainly the durability point, um, which knocks it knocks it down below an A minus for me. Okay, I'm into it. Um, so overall, I gave it an A, and I gave it an intermediate rating. What did you give it? I had it at B plus, but your point about the keys. Up, I mean, is, that's really for me what brings it upgrading yeah. me to an overall A minus, and, and and I had it at intermediate. Intermediate, yeah, because this is a guide that. Um, while it has a very elegant key, it has a lot of species in it. And so I don't necessarily think about it as a beginner. Uh, like it's beginner level would be like much smaller groups, um, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, A, A minus intermediate. Yeah. It's a great field guide. Cool. Up next. Highly we, recommended. What, what do we have there, Matt? Oh next boy. Next on the stack. It's pretty dense. Ooh. It's pretty epic. Ooh. It's one of the, probably one of the most famous guides in the natural circles I'm in. Um, it's a legend. It is a legend. It's Mark Elbrock's Mammal Tracks and Sign, A Guide to North American Species. One thing I will say about this before we dive in, it doesn't say field guide. <laughs> I thought it did. But when I look at the cover, it does. It says mm-hmm. a guide. Yeah. So they're careful to say that it's not a guide. Fair because enough. you'll see that... It's borderline reference, if not full-on reference guide here. Um, I just, I've seen it in the field so much, I've always thought of it as a field guide, and I thought it said field guide on the front, but it might just be a... Mark might think of this as, an, as a reference guide. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's but we're going to rate it as a field guide. We think of it as a field guide, and so that's how we're rating it. So, because it's pretty big. But it's, a, it's, it's the most comprehensive, it's, one, it's the most used... Uh, wildlife tracking guide in north america by trackers so here we go distribution i got a plus what do you got oh sorry i was looking at the wrong thing um a all right Navig- navigability ball. i had a b b it has the, it well. has this cool it has a section in it, towards the front where you can like flip through and it has you know tracks at 100 percent tracks at 50 percent whatever you know based on size and so, kind of, if you if you have a track that you have no idea, your 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 go to is kind of to flip through that section. Yeah, but you know, it's like nobody's really done it with the mammal tracks for like a key or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like you'll find, you know, a lot of these groups that we're going to talk about, it's like no, nobody's done what Newcombs did with the wildflower guide. That's why I gave Newcombs an A plus because it's like he took a really complex group and made a key that's like incredible and works. Botany is is like that, I guess though. But, so anyway, there's not really a good key. It's grouped um, systematically, so, like, you know, you'll, fi- you'll find your... Mustelids together. You'll find your canids together, together yeah. your felines together, which is helpful. Um, but, again, you have to know what you're kind of looking at and know to go to the right place in the guide. Um, which is good. And it's and I don't have it as a beginner guide. I, I have yeah, it I have it as an expert as well. Yeah, I have it at an intermediate, but, yeah, it borders on expert. I think it's an expert guide because... It's each species account, which I gave an A, is like extremely dense, has a ton of information. Um, it's not that easy to like piece apart, and it's not really good. This guide is not very good. I'm picturing someone who doesn't know a lot about tracks, mm. and I'm picturing them trying to figure out a, a track they're looking at with it, and trying to to decipher Mark's elegant, but like Expert very level. nerdy expert level sure. gate comparisons and mm-hmm. measurements and like all these things that I feel like are expert tracker level. Mm-hmm. He, to be fair, he does have a section at the beginning of the book for, right. for people who maybe aren't familiar with some of those, some of those terms or how to measure or what he does, but he doesn't, but the thing, the thing about Mark's book is he doesn't really, he doesn't, he gives you that section, but he doesn't bend towards like the book doesn't bend towards mm-hmm. the beginner. Yeah, that's what I find with Newcombs is like they they take shortcuts with their terminology and their and the way they describe things because they're aiming towards a newcomb. You know what I mean? Like towards the intermediate. They don't. Yeah, it, audience. Because if Newcombs was an expert guide, then it would use a lot of different. There's a lot of botanical terminology, dude. Like there's I have a whole book on botanical terminology right over here that I use all the time, 
but <laughs> God, that sounded so nerdy. Huh? Oh yeah, I, I got it. I... <laughs> he does. I can see it. It's for, right there for for the listeners. Yes, it's there, <laughs> and it's a beast. <laughs> it is a beast. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, Mark didn't really try and like do that with his tracking. Button. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't think that was the intention of it. No, cool. So we'll, we'll call it an expert guide. Um, and I think, I think that's right. And I give it species accounts an A because I think it's so thorough. Yeah. And I had A plus. I think I wouldn't put, give it an A plus because it's not very elegant to me. Like I think A plus species accounts to me are ones that have illustrations and have that kind of next level naturalist, like when you open it, it's like, oh my god, mm-hmm. that's to me. We'll get. We'll, there's one book that I gave an a, that we're gonna get to hopefully that I gave an A plus on species accounts for that. Um, for that reason, it gets an A plus. And the last category for Elbrock is packability, Ugh. which is it's it's the <laughs> we started off talking about it, but it's dense. This thing is like what? It's three, a monster. Three or four pounds. It's like, I don't know. I'm it's like a sack of weight. flour. It's this is really you have to, if you pick this up and you put this in your backpack, you are really taking yeah. a ride with that thing. But that being said, overall, I'm giving it an A because you want that. You want it in spite of the I, weight. You want that thing with you. If you're yeah. if you're serious about tracking, you're gonna want that in your pack. I gave it an A minus overall, and I gave the packability a D. So it's just something to really keep in mind. Like it doesn't weight it down because it's got. An A plus for distribution for me, and that B for navigability, an A for species accounts, and it's got a D for packability, I'm but the, it's still an A, A minus to me. I'm in the D camp for packability with an A overall. Cool. So A expert. All right. Next, Next up. Next guy. Here, wait. Let's just take a like, take a pause. Yeah. So we're at almost 40 minutes. Yeah, but there's some junk in there that we're going to cut. I think we got about four minutes of... Junkables. Junkables. So we need to. It's good though. I we think can, we did we what we needed to do. Yeah. It's just like we can. We, we can, can't do we can what blow we did through this pretty quick, and we can blow through this pretty quick, honestly, because it's yeah. the stuff we've already talked about. We didn't. We spent a lot of time in these two books, but now I think our listeners will know. We can cruise. We can cruise through this one too. Okay. Let's go. All right. So next up is Peterson's Eastern Trees. This this will apply to the Peterson's Western Trees as well. One thing I like about this book. Matt is that um, they used to have trees and shrubs, same same uh, thing under the Peterson Field guys, right? Yeah, and they cut the they cut the shrubs on these and and honed in on trees, um, so it's more comprehensive. What happened to shrubs? I think shrubs is a separate guide now. Oh, okay, good. I think they, they, they didn't gave just it, they, throw it they, out. They, they accorded its own status. Yeah, um, that's good. I think we're both in the camp of always like we we are definitely biased towards guides that like are refined geograph more and more geographically and more in groups Mm -hmm. um yeah so first off distribution range maps i gave it a b i got an a it had i felt like they were pretty solid yeah it has good range maps and i'll and i'll tell you this is a nitpicky thing yeah but one thing using this guide i've noticed some trees are interesting because you often find trees outside their natural range right so even if it's a north american species even if it's an eastern north american species sometimes it has been spread by people um to all over the place and wh- one of these is something that was blooming recently matt black locust and i was just curious you know i know i know black locust but i was like yeah look this up in the tree guide check it out and the range map for black locust in there is inaccurate you yeah. see black locusts all over the place here and it has the black locust range map is much more narrow, and it, that being said, it does have a note in the text, yeah, that says that black locust has expanded its range. But I feel like the range map should should reflect where the where the thing can be found. Yeah, and so like, that's why, why couldn't they just update the range map? That's why I'm dropping it. Okay, with a B. I hear you. Like that's that is nitpicky, but I think if you have that familiarity, then you would know that. Mm-hmm. And just a, a note that we are only rating guides that we are familiar with. We're not going to try and rate guides that we're not familiar with although you can still apply these things to guides that you don't know that well Mm -hmm. um navigability b minus i gave it a straight b and the reason being you could have a dichotomous key here i think you totally could it doesn't though it's really 
it, they, I think that thing you showed me earlier that it has in it, where it's like it does have some groupings and stuff like that. It has that... six major groupings that can that can help narrow it down. So you're not you're not back to like Matt was describing, where you just sit down, plop down, and start flipping through every page. I do like these silhouette pages. The a silhouette lot. pages are nice, and there's there's a good description of terms. And one thing about all the Peterson series field guides is they have in the beginning they have a section that that is titled "How to Use This Book," which is Obviously, if you're if you're about to go use this book in the field, you should brush up on that first, and I and I appreciate that. Um, it's it's a, it's good that it's in there, but yeah, the lack of the dichotomous key um, for me drops it to a B. Um, yeah, I agree. Species accounts, um, I gave it an A minus. I give it a straight A. I I think they're pretty good. Um, yeah, I think the plates are gorgeous and they're helpful. They are. I mean, look at this. You have the twigs. You have the the nut. And the acorn in this case. They, they the manage to cr cram a lot of information onto the plate without making it feel busy or crowded. And the aesthetic is really nice. And they have nice... Look at these um, sweet tables that they have in here. I mean, I don't use these that much, but you, they're so cool. Like, I can imagine driving down south where there's all these oaks and stuff. And yeah. Like, that being super helpful. Yeah, they, they, they um, can be really nice. And, that's part of navigability, I guess. And I also like... Um, what's interesting here, Matt... You know, we, we love illustrations, right? I found that this guide does a really cool thing with photos. And on um, the plates, you have your illustrations, which, are, which as Matt said, were beautiful. But yep. in, the, in, the, um, in the descriptions, so in the de description section, they have um, photos of the bark of a mature tree. Which I think is really cool. Oh it's yeah, one it's, of these, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. one of these areas where an illustration actually probably isn't as helpful as as point. an actual photo. So oh. I thought that was cool, and I give him props for that. Mad props because it got really sweet illustrations and he got sweet photos. Yeah. Uh, so I gave it a oh wait packability. Packability. I gave it a B plus. Um, I gave it a B. So yeah. Same thing. It's like it's kind of like the the classic feel. It's like the Newcombs. It's cover. similar to Newcombs. Um, um, so I, I gave it the same. I gave it a B plus for for packability. Yeah. Durability. It's got it's you know, not the greatest on durability. Reasonable for packability. So overall, intermediate. Intermediate B plus. That's what I have too. B plus. Um, it's a it's a really solid little guide. The only real thing I I want to see a really elegant tree key for this book. Or books like this. That would be cool. We'll be on the lookout for a guy that has that. Um, next up, it's Audubon's Field Guide to New England. So this is, um, a, we'll just start off by saying it's a beginner level guide. Certainly a beginner level guide. We wanted to make sure we had one of those rated in here. And we'll, we'll rate more in the future too. But it covers like everything. So it's got It's a flora, field guide to New England. Okay. Flora, fauna, fungi, in. winter sky, or like night, weather. Night sky, yeah. It's, just... um, it's got... Um, a little bit of geology, a little bit track and sign. It's got covers all the mammals, even whales. Um, it's got like tells you about parks and places to go, um, like prominent. All right, uh, Matt, locations. slow slow down. Sorry, there's a lot in here. He, so Matt, this is an example of a guy that's trying to do too much. I think I think you're right. I really I, and Stefan, you're really harping on. It. You were harping <laughs> on this thing earlier. And I know some people that use this guide and love it, just by the way. So it's not... And again, Matt and I have used this guide. Well, yeah. We, we're not rating anything that we haven't used. But I used. think this is one of the reasons why we want to make a field guide rating system is because like, some of these guides, I feel like they're getting away with something because they're trying to do too much. Yeah. And trying to do too much, I feel like, draws away so much from whoever's buying it, the, the, whoever's, whoever's using it. Um, so I think Steph and I are on the same page with guides really trying to be effective at what they're doing. And in this case, it's doing a lot of different things kind of ineffectively. Yeah. A general, a general guide tends to be far less helpful and it, and it starts to r really show in categories like comprehensiveness, species accounts. Those are the things where it really takes a beating. Yeah. So, you know, if you disagree, we'd love to hear from you if you disagree with us on any of these things. Um, you know, previously or with this guide, because if this is a guide that you really think has been working for you, send us a message and let us know how. Uh, yeah, and why? And why? Because maybe we're not we're not taking into account something um, that works for some naturalists. Yeah. That, that you know we're all different. So. So anyway, distribution C. Um, I gave it a D plus. 
I actually, I think I want to go lower because we were looking a little bit more after. I had already given it a grade, mm-hmm. and then I started to realize. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of in, in the category of like you you look down and it doesn't have nothing, so it doesn't have it's yeah. not an F, it but it has like swamps. No. I think this comes into the comes into discussion here is that it's a New England field guide, so in some ways it's already yeah limited its distribution like mm-hmm. there's a few other guides that we might rate and talk about at some point that are really micro geographic like they cover really small areas and mm-hmm. i love those guides usually but new england is pretty big i yeah. mean there's a big difference between like southern southwestern connecticut and like northern maine oh yeah <laughs> um, oh, so yeah. anyway d d plus for distribution navigability I gave it a C, but I'd probably, I, I don't went, know. I went C minus here. It's it's not very navigable. There's there's so many sections. I guess when you, okay, because it's like, if you have this guide and you're like, I need to figure out what constellation that is, like, you can find that. If you're like, I see a mammal, like, you can go to the mammal section. It's really tough, though, when you get to, like, the plants or, like, yeah, some of these things, birds, like, it's like, I don't know, like. I guess like it's such there's so covers so few species there's so few accounts that it is kind of navigable in that way because you just go to the bird section and you just flip mm-hmm. through a couple pages. So anyway, C minus species accounts, which is just kind of what I was getting into. D, D. It's not an F because the the has, accounts that they have are, have useful information, but it's just like they're micro photos, like they're teeny the little fern photos, section, and they're kind of like dude. mashed together. Oh man, yeah. No. Check out the fern section; it's the, pretty bad. The fern section is is really really. This is an exa- another example. Of like, if they just didn't have it in there, I feel like that's almost better. Yeah, but it it's like. Because yeah. I feel like it's just confusing. I mean, it's just a blur of green, all the pictures. It's not very helpful. It's, it's a case of like, yes, there's a photo of the thi- of the thing in question. No, it's completely useless to help you tr- ID, uh, yeah. you know, what you're looking at in the field. So, so packability A. Yeah, A. I mean, it's got a solid binding. It's in that. It's in that real nice sleek category. Really quality. Oh, it has sharks in here too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, in it, case you come across, it can, it can be inspirational. A shark. It's certainly that inspirational. is pretty sweet. That's a good point. But this is a field guide rating system. True, it's like, and we're, and we're rating it as such, and and therefore overall, Matt, I'm giving it a C. I give it a C too. C beginner. So it's C like beginner. I don't really recommend this guide for beginners. I don't. Um, unless it's like your absolute first field guide, maybe then. But even then, I think I could recommend something better. Mm-hmm. Um. Last one I think we're going to get to Yeah, today. let's hit this one. It's a favorite of both of ours. It's one of these field guides that, yes, we use it in the field. We always have it with us. Sibley's Field Guide to Birds. It's uh, in the long lineage of North American field guides. Uh, mm-hmm. Just like a fam- very, very famous guide. And um, we're going to give it high marks, but we want to we want to just share those and why we think why we think that way. And we're, just for the record, we're, we're rating the Sibley's Field Guide's field guide to uh the birds of north america so it's it's all north america there are the the subdivision of east and west um yep so for clarity yeah. so yeah so this is the big one um distribution a a plus yeah i think a plus is valid what i gotta say matt i love the range maps in this book there's they're they're not huge yeah but they're clear and easy to read and they convey a lot of information there yeah. is uh, summer, winter, year round. Yeah, s- you know sometimes, and then I it, it, there's even yeah. like the like, the one off. It, it no, there, it's not one off, but it is like I think there's like a certain threshold. I think it might be ten sightings and okay. it gets a green dot or something. Yeah, like that. so it's cool though. Like so, there, the, in, and it's all in like a, a little square, like maybe a little bit bigger than a postage stamp. Um, yeah. So they don't take up too much space. There, I feel like they could be could be bigger but they're just big enough where they're really yeah. effective yeah i w- i'm gonna stick with my a and not give it an a plus i mean i'm thinking about peterson's where it has the range maps in the back that you flip to and Fair that enough. is kind of that's the highest. A, that, yeah that's an a plus but, but he doesn't have quite as much information in those they are bigger and point. easier to read but it's just one generic color yeah. kind of thing or no he, t- ha- winter he, he has and... three he has winter yeah. breeding and year round yeah Anyway, we're nitpicking here. It's a really good, really it's a, good yeah, distribution. It's an A. 
navigability b i mean this is a group that nobody's really figured out a way to key, to make a, an elegant key to the birds that we know of and um so in a, in some way you just really need to know kind of what you're looking at in the, in the general sense so yeah. like, is it a duck is it a hawk is it, it gets a... into a, like what we were talking about in the bird episode where we talked about the ways to id birds yeah oh yeah and knowing knowing like shape and behavior stuff can help you get to where where you want to be quicker yeah. um if you're an avid birder you're going to know just by the way you thumb through your guide like you're going to be able to thumb quickly to sparrows or you're going to thumb quickly to warblers um yeah. but yeah o- o- overall um i'm giving it a c plus for navigability okay i gave it a b um one thing that he has which i think is very helpful is at the beginning of each group he has uh one or two pages where it's just like all the most similar looking plumages of birds yeah those are for that group so you can do the side-by-side comparison that's kind of why i gave it a little bit of a leg up but you know yeah i could go b minus on that um, species accounts. This is the one that I give an A plus to. Right. On. Maybe it doesn't deserve a full on A plus. I gave it an A because some of the colors are off. Like the robin is a little too red, but it's like really nitpicky, mm-hmm. and the and the plates are beautiful. Like they're just, it's totally elegant to look at. Yeah, it's a wonderful field guide. Um, and they're just really helpful, really accurate. Um, they're not like aesthetic is spot on. Yeah, it's just it's to me it's the epitome of what a field guide should be sharing with you about the thing the organisms and comprehensive oh yeah totally comprehensive the new the new one has like even more of like the the random like yeah maybe you'll see which i don't consider kind of that words. part of comp to me i don't think of that as no but but it is, it is pretty nice no it's not Those, it's like like not a factor but random, it's like a bonus yeah it's a it bonus. is a bonus yeah so um a a plus for species accounts mm-hmm Packability, I give for the giant one or the the all of North America one. I gave a C because it's pretty dense. I gave it a B minus. It's pretty heavy. It's got really that really nice binding. Mm-hmm. It's not close to the Elbrock, but it is like when I hold the two to get next to each other. They're kind of similar in weight. It's almost heavier, dude. Seriously, um, <laughs> check it out in a bit. But yeah, so I can't give it a good grade for that. I give it a C. Um, the thing about Elbrock's book, just to go back, is, is it the bindings really shot like not that great? <laughs> so it's like on top of being heavy, it's like it might fall apart on you. But this book won't. It, the bindings top notch. Yeah, Sibley's is rugged. So this is where I'm just want to be. So I gave and I give the Western and the Eastern Sibley's an A for for yeah for packability, for packability portable, which is why I give the overall grade for Sibley's the giant one an A minus, and I give the western and eastern versions an a because mm-hmm. i think they're better field guides i do i do too it's, i think it's this not, is a more of a reference you know, guide to for it, me personally if you're going on a cross-country road trip where you're going to hit both coasts yeah you, that's a you good want you want to bring but then your, it's, you're your driving right? siblings um but but yeah i i agree that the uh you're usually going to be better off with the east if you're in the east yeah. or the west if you're in, in the west um that being said i don't have either of those and i just use the I use the one and only. Yeah. Um, an intermediate, right? This is a guide. A, it's an intermediate guide, and I'm going A minus. That's what I gave it to to the big one mm-hmm. to the all. And, and I'm totally with you there. A A for the for the e, siblings east or a, yeah. A for and the, the only difference west. is, I mean, the the technically the sib the big uh, all of North America has more drawings because there's more space, but I don't really give the smaller ones a knock for that because it get because they really get um. So much more packable. You get what you need. Um, as far as that, I mean, I've used my Eastern Sibleys for ten years now, and it's just like it's been one of the most used field guides I have. Hmm. Such a great guide. Um, so anyway, lots of grades, lots of A's, um, lots of other field guides out there to to rate. Yeah, so we're hoping to return to this every once in a while. Maybe when a new field guide comes out, we can just give it a quick review on a on an episode or if you come across a field guide that you think is awesome or that you think is junk that you think <laughs> would, would be cool for us to look at we're and, not ragging and anybody. and run it through our our rating system um yeah send send it our way and we'll also be hopefully we're gonna compile um some of the our ratings and a little like paragraph something written up about these things so, and they'll be on our website so that you can find it and scroll through and, and look at what we're, we're saying about this stuff so they'll be written down somewhere. Um, so what's the website? 
Our, oh, yeah, we have a new website. Nice. Um, so our website is www.naturalisticsite.wordpress.com. Okay. So we're a free WordPress site right now. Maybe we'll pay for it someday. <laughs> but right now it's naturalisticsite.com. No spaces, just naturalisticsite.com. Or, sorry, naturalisticsdotwordpress.com. Yeah. Um, you can also find us on Twitter, naturalistics underscore. Send us a tweet. Or email us at naturalisticspod at gmail.com. So send us some questions. Tell us what you think about your field guides. And that's going to wrap us up. Hopefully this is helpful to you in some way, and hopefully you can, you know, take these principles of how we're looking at field guides and apply it to whatever, wherever you are, whatever you're looking at, and uh, see you later. Thanks for listening. <laughs>